Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to cover the basics of the brand new Crowd Simulation toolset with iClone 8.4. Most features of CrowdSim are based on Motion Director, which helps to improve and streamline the crowd generation and control processes. Crowds can be populated in a number of ways, including volume box dummies, walkways, navigation meshes, and interactive actor groups. You can also assign avoidance behavior to avoid actor collisions. It's important to note that actor core characters are optimized for use with crowd simulation. You can find out more about these character types on the actor core page. Crowd simulation works in tandem with the motion director IMD content to allow you to easily assign specific behavior and movement types to different types of characters using a tag system, enabling feet stabilization when walking. You can also further retarget manually for a variety of body proportions and foot position scenarios. Crowd animations can also easily be transferred to popular production pipelines such as Unreal, Unity, Omniverse, Maya, and more via the Reillusion Auto Setup tools. Let's start by looking at a quick environment setup using the Nav Mesh and Walkway features. We can generate a Nav Mesh from the Create menu to start which is indicated by a blue region on the ground plane. You can tweak various parameters here, which we explore more in the dedicated nav mesh tutorial. In addition, we can also create a path and extend its width in the modify panel to convert it into a walkway, which allows for more freedom of movement without being constricted to a single file line. There is also a new feature called actor groups, and there are some basic ones that have been added to the free embedded content in the Content Manager. There are presets and random types, with the preset type including a combination of interactive motions. Once we apply it to our scene, a window will pop up with some additional settings, including a drop-down to assign gender presets. You can also randomize the actor core characters used, and set motion looping options as well. And when you're satisfied, just hit OK. Once applied, the actor group will override the nav mesh, meaning other external characters will not be able to enter that area. When you apply an actor group, there is a loop type option for repetition that assigns facial expressions to your character. You can manually enter the number of frames for the expression performance length here. Again, you can hit randomize multiple times until you get a combination of performances that you want. When you use a random type actor group, you can randomize the starting frames for the motions assigned to the included characters in order to make their actions appear less uniform. If you move or rotate an actor group where it overlaps with the nav mesh, you'll need to use the update nav mesh button from the toolbar to adjust the nav mesh to adapt to your changes. When we're satisfied, we can play back to see the results. Unlike with other crowd generation types, actor groups will use preset motions instead of simulations via motion director assets. Okay, let's move on to explore our first method for generating a crowd using the volume dummy. Under scatter in the create menu, you'll find the crowd generation tool. I'm going to use the create volume method here to generate characters within a specific range. Create Volume will provide you with a dummy geometry in your scene that you can scale and move around. You can assign various parameters here, such as the number of characters, their orientation, and you can even add a focal point for them all to face together. It's super easy to bring in the characters you want from the Content Manager simply by clicking and dragging. You'll see that their tags will automatically be assigned. As with bringing in the characters, you can also click and drag in some standing motions, as in this case we want them all to remain stationary. Motions from Actor Core normally have tags, however if you're bringing in motions from other sources, you can manually add the tags as well to pair them with the proper characters. Combinations determines how many motions a character can utilize based on their tags. You can also set a random start frame and loop the motions without expressions. After you're done, hit Deploy Actors and play back to see the results. Be aware that you can always adjust individual character rotation and position at any time after deployment. 
All right, next let's take a look at crowd generation using a walkway and nav mesh with IMD content. Let's once again go up to generate crowd from the create menu, only this time I'm going to choose pick object and pick the walkway we created earlier. You can set the number of characters, their spacing, and direction ratio here, which determines the ratio of characters facing the origin or destination of the path. Since we're using a walkway here, it's recommended to utilize IMD content for animations, as each IMD contains a number of motions, as opposed to using a single motion. Again, let's repeat the process of dragging in a collection of actor core characters along with some IMDs from the pedestrian actions motion pack. When using IMDs, there are also some parameters you can set. In this case, I just want the characters to always be moving and not switching or mixing any performs. From there, let's deploy the actors and hit the motion director play button to see our simulation. You can see that even when the actors reach the end of the walkway, they'll walk back themselves. Finally, let's deploy some characters using the nav mesh. Again, going up to generate crowd and this time picking our blue nav mesh as our deployment region. The nav mesh has similar deployment options which you can fool around with to get your initial parameters, then hit Generate Placement until you get an iteration that you like. Let's throw in some new actors here and once again deploy them. Again, use the Motion Director Start button to enable the simulation utilizing the IMDs. This is not necessary with standard motions. You'll see all of the characters on both the walkway and nav mesh naturally move around, avoiding collision with each other and changing directions. Looks cool so far. Let's quickly look at how we can record the crowd simulation next. When recording motions with motion director mode, a red name indicates that actor is using a motion as opposed to an IMD. So you'll want to ensure that you choose record selected in the start mode dropdown and then select all of the actors with names in white text. Then start record by selected. Hit stop when you're satisfied with the length of the simulation. And if you enter into the timeline, you can see that there is currently no simulation data recorded onto the actor's track since it's currently in light mode. In the scene manager, you can also see that each actor has an icon indicating that it's currently in light mode as well. If you toggle edit mode, then a whole bunch more customization options will appear in the Attributes panel, and you'll also see a motion clip in the actor's motion track. You can switch back to light mode at any time. When simulating, you'll notice that each actor in the crowd has avoidance behavior to avoid bumping into each other and other objects. This option is enabled by default in the general settings of the MD Controls panel. There are also some parameters here which we will discuss in the dedicated tutorial. This is a really cool feature that saves tons of time. With your nav mesh selected, you can create a barrier volume box to prevent actors from entering a defined region. Just like the crowd generation volume, this can be moved and scaled according to your preference. Be sure to update the nav mesh before simulating once again. Now, if you're using embedded IMD content for your crowd simulation, you'll see stable footsteps without sliding for all character types, provided that your tags are accurately assigned. Actor core characters will auto-detect the best IMDs, however, sometimes results may not be perfect due to varying proportions within character tag types. In this case, you'll want to enable the lock feet option, which will take your character into edit mode and override the previous simulation. Be aware that this feature is currently only available with specific IMDs. However, once we have this active and begin the simulation again, you'll see that the foot sliding issue is now fixed. If you're using a stylized character with unconventional proportions, you can use the retarget button in the MD controls panel to quickly correct motion issues as well, especially in scenarios like this where you can see the foot sinking into the ground plane. This can be combined with the aforementioned lock feet option as well. The motion director system allows your actors to adapt to terrain changes such as slopes and steps via the plant feet and snap to surface options 
under Surface Sensor Settings. You can see the before and after results here after a single click. Finally, there is an IMD cache mechanism that allows you to pre-process actor and IMD behavior. Under Animation, go to Create IMD Cache and then once again drag in your actors and motions or IMDs. That's it for this Getting Started tutorial for Crowd Simulations. Please check out all of the other Crowd Simulation tutorials that go into more detail on the specific features. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.